All right, hello everybody. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me and see me on this. Uh, thanks for attending today's meeting to discuss the Wisconsin 23 expansion project in the Fond du Lac urban area. My name is Rob Wagner. I am the project development supervisor for state highway projects in Sheboygan and Fond du Lac County, along with the expansion project on Highway 23. I am sharing my video momentarily so that you can put a, a face to the voice. It's nice to meet everybody. Hello. Um, many of you may recognize me. I've been working on this project since the early 2000s, working on the planning of it, and we are getting ever so closer to having the project built. Uh, this is our last major uh, part of the project that's getting led. So before we get started, I'd like to go through a few household uh, housekeeping items. Um, the first thing to let everybody know is that uh, the meeting is being recorded, recorded for the purpose of preparing minutes for this meeting. Second, please mute your microphone and or phones. If it's not your turn to speak or comment, uh, that will happen later on in the in the meeting. We, are, we will also be muting all participants during the presentation because of the number of people in attendance. And it being a virtual meeting, it will be handling the question and answer portion differently than other meetings. If you do have a question, please enter them in the chat feature during the meeting and we will address them at the end. We will answer all questions in the chat and then in the then open it up to those who are uh, raising their hand option on the uh, video option here or those that are on the phone. Um, and we'll call on them accordingly. Um, if anybody is on the phone, uh, we ask, we will ask at the end if you have any questions. And we appreciate your patience as we navigate this virtual format. So to provide a better uh, audio, we're going to minimize the video because that takes up more band length. So uh, at this point, we'll say so long i'll keep speaking and we'll introduce a few other people as we go along i'm gonna have to put cornell phone and again uh please mute those of you oh, that darn. might be on phones we're, getting, uh, we're getting some feedback please mute your phones uh, to, to start our presentation okay. i'd like to give a brief background and purpose of the pro proposed project So our project limits are from US Highway 151 uh, from Seven Hills, uh, from 151 to Seven Hills Road. Uh, here's a, a map of it more so. Um, this arrow really should be over here by the interchange. So the project is I think roughly five miles in length and runs from 151 to Seven Hills Road as you see it here. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss this construction project, um, the project's staging and the contractor schedule as we move along. And just to give uh, a brief little background, uh, we've been working on this project for, if uh, people could please mute your microphones and get in feedback, so that would be great. Um, we've been working on this project, putting together the project scope for for many, many years. So we've had public information meetings uh, since the 2000s, the last one in 2019, putting together the scope of this project. So some of the items you see on the on the page on the screen here is the scope that is within this project and. One thing I'd like to note is uh, we certainly want to open this up to questions, questions specific to the construction of the project, not um, you know suggestions on changing the way things are going to be built or anything like that, because we do have the scope all set. And like I said, this is what you have here. So we will be expanding Highway 23 to four lanes from here to um, to Plymouth. As those of you that have gone east can see uh, the projects we've already started to the east. But in this section specifically, we will be adding uh, on the starting from the west, moving east, 
a roundabout at the Wisconsin American uh, intersection. At the County K intersection that's there now, we will building a jug handle interchange. It's a little bit different than the typical diamond interchange. At County uh, UU, we will building be building a diamond interchange at that location. As I said, we'll be expanding the existing two lanes uh, that currently runs from about Whispering Springs Boulevard all the way to Seven Hills to meet up with the construction that's going on currently. At certain intersections, we'll, we'll be building uh, what we call R cuts or U-turn intersections. So you will not be able to drive through them. Um, you take a right, you go down the road a bit and you come back on the you make a U-turn and come back in the direction that you want to go. And those will be found at, at Tower Road and at, at Seven Hills on this project. And there are several others of those for the rest of the project to the east. We will also be building several new local road connections in and around uh, more of the urban area near Whispering Springs um, and the area down to Highway K just to help uh, the residents and the access from those that have been getting onto Highway 23 to use the, the new facilities when they're completed. And then lastly, we will be completing the old Plank Trail uh, along with the other projects that are currently going on in Plymouth and Sheboygan um, from Plymouth. It will be connected all the way uh, underneath the 151 interchange and will connect up to the Prairie Trail. So that's the basic background of where we're at on the project scope. At this point, I'd like to introduce uh, those of are in attendance here tonight that will help out and that will be working out on the project. Kurt Peters will be the project manager for Wisconsin DOT. Uh, of course, myself, the project supervisor. Jack Lanning will be the project engineer. He works for KL Engineering and is a representative for us to build this uh, project over the next few years. Uh, Nate Swanky, who is the project managers for Michael Corporation, uh, the company that won the lead for this project, and Missy Cook, our Wisconsin DOT communications manager. So with that, I would like to pass this on to Jack to go over the construction of the project. Hi there, like Rob mentioned, I'm Jack Lanning from Kale Engineering. Um, as a project engineer, I'll probably be your primary point of contact if you have any questions um, or would like to discuss anything as, as we go through here the next couple of years. Uh, a couple of things I want to talk about um, are on the screen here. I guess I want to talk a little bit about safety. Um, safety of the workers and traveling public is top priority on this project as well as pretty much any highway construction project. Um, when we're out there, if there's equipment around, um, please stay back at a safe distance so that that nobody gets hurt. And sometimes there's blind spots for backhoes, dump trucks, things like that. So um, just be safe out there. Um, in some of the early stages, uh, we're going to remove the existing shoulder and there might be some tight roadway lifts for a week, maybe week plus. Um, please drive carefully through the project when the contractors are doing work in those locations. And one thing that seems to be an issue quite a bit is people using their cell phones in the work zone. Um, it's not safe for the driver. It's not safe for us out there working and and it is illegal. And lastly, safety. Um, some residents probably have some kids and stuff. Please talk with them and have them you know, stay back from the equipment or if we have some excavations and things like that, because we don't want anybody getting hurt out on the project. For emergency access, ourselves and the contractor, we will be working with emergency responders to make sure that they have access where they need it um, if anything comes up. Side road access, there will be some side roads that we'll need to close, obviously, to, to finish our construction. Um, a lot of the side roads well, all of the side roads before prior to closing them we will get a, a message board up 
uh, warning people uh, seven days in advance when when we're going to do that closure. Um, so you'll you'll have to find an alternate route just to get around while we're working in those intersections. Private access will maintain private access uh, for the more majority of the project. There are going to be times where we're grading through um, at people's driveways or placing gravel, things like that, where it's it might be a little bit limited, but we'll we'll do our best to accommodate. When we go through with concrete paving, there we may have uh, a longer closure on driveways that we're going to have to work with till we get the concrete down and we get cure on it so that we can start driving on it. Uh, with this. Prior to any driveway closures like that, the contractor will coordinate with the individual residents or businesses. And lastly, um, if people are interested in a construction update email, I'll be more than happy to put something together. Um, with that, since I don't have a lot of people's contact information, if you could email me and get me all of your email addresses, if you want to be on this distribution list, I'll definitely put that together and I'll just give you updates uh, kind of where we are and what's coming up in the near future. And for my contact information, that'll be shown on the last slide of the presentation. With that being said, I'll turn it over to Nate and he'll go through the contractor schedule for the project. As Jack had mentioned, this, my name is Nate Swanky with Michaels Corporation um, Project Manager. I'll be overseeing this job. Um, kind of to run through some brief staging without getting into all the details of the construction that's going to be happening. Um, starting with stage one, we will be temporarily completing, or we will be primarily completing all temporary pavements that need to be done to facilitate future traffic switches and facilitate um, you know, traffic that will remain active on the corridor. Um, starting Monday, April 19th, uh, next week Monday, the plan is to start with median um, crossovers and median temporary access points uh, from 151 to basically County Highway UU. Um, there'll be various spots along there um, that will be can excavated and temporary asphalt placed um, along with that will also be completing a temporary widening at the intersection of US Highway 151 and County Highway K. Um, not quite on the map, but just kind of up near where the project ID is. Um, then after the first week or so, we'll switch to the outside temporary widening from on westbound from the County Highway UU to US Highway 151 to facilitate uh, the work that needs to happen in stage two. Uh, there will also be a temporary bypass built to get around the American Drive um, roundabout so we can build that and then a couple other connection points at uh, Mary Hill Park, um, Irene Drive, and then we will also be constructing the new side road local streets of Road 8A, Road 5 and Northway Drive. Um, that's kind of the general plan for stage one. In stage one, there are uh, long term closures that are scheduled to start, which includes County Highway UU from 23 to the south. That closure is, will start Monday 19th and will go into the summer of 2022. Um, stage one is anticipated to last roughly till mid from mid till mid to late May. Um, as you can see on the screen, stage two is constructing all the eastbound lanes from Highway 151 to County Highway UU, along with expanding uh, the westbound lanes from the current two lanes to four lanes from Seven Hills Road back to County Highway UU. Um, stage two completes the American Drive roundabout and the, the southern half of the County Highway K interchange from 23 and as well as the piece in front of uh, St. Mary's Springs. Um, as depicted here, kind of goes through the, in the main talking points. Um, County Highway K to the north of 23 in front of the school is will be closed from June 
15th until September 1st. Um, it'll be open back before school. Uh, we'll also be completing, um, as depicted in the pictures here, uh, Mary Hill Park Drive, the Southern Roundabout, uh, and all the eastbound pavement. Um, the, I would say the anticipated start time for the roundabout would be, oh, we'll start mid to late May at the end of stage one. Uh, that We have 45 calendar days to build that. Um, so it puts us to early July. Um, there is an interim completion day of November 15th. And at that point, we will have eastbound traffic up on the new eastbound lanes from County Highway U, from 151 to County Highway UU. And we also have the westbound lanes done from UU to the east back to Seven Hills Road. Um, at the intersection of UU, there'll also be another closure of County Highway UU to the north, starting at the end of stage one and the start of stage two, so right around the mid to late May. That will also be closed long term until summer of 2022 to facilitate the construction of the new ramps, the new bridge over the top of Highway 23, and the two roundabouts at the top. Um, Um, as you can hear, this is kind of the new lanes, that, the new westbound lanes from UU to the east. Um, we'll be constructing the northern half of the intersections at Taft Road, Tower Road, Poplar Road, and then at Seven Hills. Um, just before that, we'll tie into the current project that's happening out there. Um, just to, like I said before, November 15th, is our interim completion day to have that completed. Um, UU will remain closed all winter long. Um, and then that brings us to stage three, which we will flip traffic onto the new pavement and reconstruct the existing pavement from 151 to UU for the westbound lanes, and then the eastbound lanes from UU to Seven Hills Road. And then we'll also complete the remaining work at County Highway K and County Road UU. Um, here's kind of the um, little picture again to show the work zone in color to kind of put a picture with the words on where we're going in the plan. Um, work is anticipated to start in spring as soon as the weather allows and will then ultimately go until November 15th of 2022 um, for the final completion of the project. Um, we'll complete westbound from base 151 up to UU, including all the new pavement, the south, or sorry, the, the north jug handle, um, make the connection between the south half of County Highway K to the north half of County Highway K, and then there's a couple um, side roads at Whispering Springs that need to be built as well. Um, it, here too, the remaining ramps will be built um, and paved and opened. Um, Midsummer is that some time, um, and then we'll continue to build eastbound from UU back to Seven Hills Road. We'll also be completing, completing the side roads at uh, along eastbound. A couple of connections there. All right. Um. This is Kurt Peters, the project manager for the project, uh, Wistop project manager. I just wanted to touch base for those businesses that are um, on this corridor. The Wisconsin DOT has put together a, a packet to so that we can coordinate with these businesses and try to keep uh, keep things as, as painless as possible and, and allow your um, customers and clients to get to you. With this business coordination, the DOT has uh, kind of revamped our, our tools um, this year. It's called the In This Together Guide. There's a link here on the screen that will take you to that guide. It, it provides some tips and tools, uh, resources, and things like that for businesses to use throughout this construction project to try to keep things uh, moving as best we can. Um, also, please remember that the, the project team is here to help you. Um, you know, there's there's 
any information you may need from us regarding, uh, you know, upcoming changes in the project, or if we need to coordinate some special deliveries or um, special events, things like that, you can work with us on those situations as well. In this guide, there's also information about temporary business signing. If um, you need to tell your customers to get to your business in a different route, um, there's a application and permit process that we go through just to make sure uh, make sure the signs are put up in a, a good area in a safe spot and, and can easily be seen. So there's a, there's a lot of information in this guide. Um, I would advise any businesses out there to take a look at this and uh, um, use it throughout this project. Um, I'd also like to just remind people that we do have a project website as well. Um, it's the website that you use to probably get to this presentation. Um, it includes information on the entire 23 corridor, um, you know, all the way in Fond du Lac and Sheboygan counties. So if you know, there's there's different information in there about the project and project maps and things like that that you can can view and, and see. Uh, we will be posting a, um, a copy of this presentation there for those to see um, when this is done. So. <clears throat> With that, um, Rob has posted up the contact information here. Um, again, my name is Kurt Peters. You can see my information there. I'll be on site several days a week. Um, Jack Lanning is the construction project engineer. He'll be out there every day um, running the job for and representing WISDOT. We also have Nate Swanke's information, the Michaels project manager. If, if you would need to get a hold of Michaels for some reason, and there's the link to the, the project website as well. So with that, um, we would like to open this up to questions. Um, in, uh, oh, go back a slide or two here. I think we gotta make a correction. The uh, Jack Lanning website, or email address shouldn't be at wi.gov, it's klengineering.com. We'll get that corrected before we post it on the website. So sorry about that, Jack. Um, so again, opening this up for questions. Um, we do have, we would like folks to type in questions if you could. Um, and for any of those who called in, if you would like your name recorded as being uh, a part of this presentation, you can send a link or send your email or contact information to any of those folks on there. So for those that may have questions, um, you can go to this chat button on your Teams meeting screen and type in your question and then we can see that. Um, if you're on the phone, um, you know, we will try to get to you or, or send us an email um, for those questions as well. So with that, I see there's a few questions that have come in here. So Nate, maybe you can help with this one. Um, it says, maybe I missed this, but what stage will the trail be worked on? Uh, there'll be, the trail will be worked on in stage, both stage two and stage three, but currently the work is scheduled to primarily take place in stage three as far as building the trail and Getting the acres down and then concrete or asphalt paving the trail. All right. Got a few more coming in here. All right. Let me see here. There is a question that says, Will County K go over or under Highway 23? I can answer that one. County K will go under 23. We are building bridges for the Highway 23 traffic to go over. Um, when, here's a question, uh, when will County K be closed south of 23? Um, that will close at the start of stage two, so the mid to late May timeframe. And then we'll reopen again at the November 15th complete interim completion day of this year. All right, there's another question here about will the profile of the hill, will the profile of the hill on ledge view on the ledge change? Yes, um, especially with County K 
K going to be underneath of 23 or 23 going over County K? Uh, there's there's quite a there's quite a bit of uh, fill that goes in there to I'll say reduce the steepness of that hill. Yeah, I'll just add on to that. Um, it, it will be not as steep, but it, as you know, it's still a pretty big hill. So I believe our percentage uh, off the top of my head, I think the existing grade on that's about seven and a half percent and we might be going down into the six percent range or so. So as, as Kurt mentioned, having um, the structures over Highway K will, will help with that and feather it out further to the east. All right, Nate, um, there's one here that says, I missed how the Irene Drive area in Whispering Springs access roads will be completed. So I don't know if you can give a little tidbit on how or when that work will be done. Yeah, the Irene Drive connection will kind of be in conjunction with Road 8A. Um, so in stage one, it will be, you know, when we connect Road 8A, we'll also be connecting the Irene Drive connection to get out of the subdivision and get back to Road 8A. What was the other one? Help. What's up? The Whispering yeah. Springs access, access road. Uh, the, that, oh. So the Whispering Springs uh, access will access as normal um, through stage one, and I believe it stays open through stage two, and then it will be constructed in stage three when we complete or reconstruct or westbound. So I believe the access stays the same. How long will the 23 and K intersection be closed? Um, that's kind of a, a multiple part question. Uh, as previously mentioned, the south half from existing 23 to the south will be closed from roughly mid to late May through November of 2021. Um, at that point, you will not be able to pass underneath the bridges. The new south roundabout will be constructed to get up to eastbound 23, um, but you won't be able to go underneath the bridges and get to westbound at that point. Um, it's for the intersection north of County Highway 23. Um, the piece from the north down to the north roundabout will be completed between June 15th and September 1st to all access back for school. But then again, you will not be able to access westbound at that point. That'll stay closed through the length of the project. Um, and so from June 15th until November 15th of 2022. I'd like to add with that, we will be constructing temporary signals at the intersection of 151 and County Highway K that is north of the whole project area by a mile or so. So that will be the uh, safe and the intended uh, best access for those folks that need to get to the north side of County Highway K and Whispering or uh, St. Mary Springs School. All right. Um, there's a question here. What is the access to Whispering Springs golf course both during and after construction? I guess during construction, as we were just talking, the Whispering Springs access is, is still there to the Whispering Springs Road. Um, after the project, traffic, um, I'll say traffic from 23 will be utilizing the County UU interchange and be able to get there through the new, um, new access road we're building between UU and Whispering Springs. Uh, access for us will be on. At what point will the Hilltop Drive, Irene Drive get worked on? I'm still unclear where the new access for us will be and where will the new road run? I'm at the end of Irene Drive with the cul-de-sac trying to figure out the impact. So uh, Hilltop Drive gets turned into a cul-de-sac that will not have access to 23 in stage two, but the Irene Drive connection will be completed in stage one. I don't know if that answers the question or not. Or... Yeah, the, a connection is being built between 
Irene Drive and Whispering Springs Drive for for access back into Hilltop area. All right. Will the speed limit change from UU to 151 versus from Whispering Springs Road to 151? I'm trying to remember here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, basically, as I recall, and, and I'd like to double check this, or um, I think folks, if, if you're still interested in this, so maybe check with uh, Jack, because it's in our plans, but off the top of my head, um, the speed limit will reduce to, uh, I think, if you're going westbound, so if you're coming from the Sheboygan direction and you get under underneath the UU uh, bridge interchange, as you go through that, the speed limit will reduce to 45, I believe, as you start going down the hill. And then once you get to the bottom of the hill, starting to approach the uh, jug handles and the uh, the new roundabout that will be constructed at Wisconsin American. The speed limit will transition to 35, and and then you'll you'll be at the roundabout. Okay, it says, will there be a frontage road from Whispering Springs Boulevard down to K? No, there will not be a, a frontage road. Um, the closest thing, the the trail, the old plank trail uh, for bicyclists and pedestrians will will be running on the north side of Coney Highway or of 23 from 151 through Coney Highway K all the way up to Coney UU, and then it'll cross UU and and run on the south side all the way till it meets up with the rest of the trail. But as for a frontage road, no. The Whispering Springs folks that live down there, the golf course and all all the homes, uh, they, they will have to um, use the new Whispering Springs access road to get on and off of the new uh, westbound lanes of Highway 23, but that'll be for a right in, right out only. So folks coming from from the uh, downtown Fond du Lac coming up 23 would have to go to uh, the UU interchange and they can go all the way north to the new access road, which we call 8A, which um, is about a half mile or a quarter mile north of the interchange. Take that into the Whispering Springs uh, community, or you could come back on the highway down the ramp and take a right at that new Whispering Springs um, access road, which is going to be built um, several hundred feet west of the existing location. All right. Um, there's one here. It says, has it anything changed with construction from UU to Whispering Springs and when will that start? I guess I don't think anything has changed in our plans for that construction. And a lot of that work is we'll be starting here next week with temporary widenings and moving into traffic switches and then or you know traffic shifts and then uh, right into the construction of the the reconstruction of lanes so that work will be starting right away um, another question what traffic or what will traffic be directed to golf course drive during and after yeah uh, <clears throat> golf course drive is as as most of you know uh, just a, a, it's a local road north of the golf course and the community up there. There will be no detour or directed traffic to that, but it certainly will be uh, an avenue to get into uh, the the subdivision for for you folks. So I guess I would highly recommend um, finding the the best way for you. Uh, you know, preferably we'd like to get as much traffic off of Highway 23 while we're working on it, but because of the the lay of the land and um, all the restrictions we have, we can't do much other than work on the existing footprint. So, uh, in a perfect world, we'd rather have a detour and build this easy, but it just can't be done that way. So, uh, the more traffic that can take alternative routes away from 23 will be beneficial and safer for yourself. So, I guess I would uh, consider Golf Course Drive 
you know, as if it works for you, then uh, you know, consider taking that. All right. Um, question here about I live in Popular. If you need fill, I'd like Pond Duck. Uh, I believe the contractor has their their fill sites um, established at this point. So, sorry about that. Um, and then there's another question about the presentation being posted. Yes, we will be posting this to the website um, in the, in a few days from now once we get it uh, um, loaded things. So that will be posted. Another question, what will the access be to Wisconsin American Drive during the roundabout construction? Um, we are building a temporary bypass on the west side of the roundabout um, kind of through the front corner of the Aurora Clinic um, property there so that we can maintain full access to that property throughout throughout all the construction staging. Um, so there will be full access there. All right. Um, another question again about Whispering Springs and Irene Drive access. Is there, can we maybe go back to that stage one yeah, can you see that? I think I pulled it up. I'm on state. It shows stage, stage three. three. Oh, yeah. stage. OK. So the stage one access, um, you know, again, we will. We're first going to build the temporary road off of Irene Drive to Whispering Springs Drive, kind of right in the middle of the Whispering Springs Drive name there. And then we're also building a connection between Whispering Springs Drive and UU, uh, kind of at the top of the screen for access back into that area as well. And I guess th those are gonna be permanent roads being built for the access in there and then, um, Later in the project, we build the new access. After we remove the access to Whispering Springs, we build the new access kind of off of uh, Ledge View um, there to Highway 23. So I hope that answers it a little bit clearer for these folks. So now you can you can go from you know. From this area, you can get out to Whispering Springs and then out to U W U U this direction, um, or you'll be able to get out to 23 through Ledge View connection here. Um, will Richards have direct access onto the highway once completed? Yes, um, there will be access there. What is going in at the end of Lee? Oak Court, will this be a connection road or will there be just a road that runs next to it? Um, Lee Oak Court will remain as it is. The The new road that we are putting in, uh, I'll go back to the slide here. So I believe Lee Oak Court's in about this area. Um, it will remain as is as a cul-de-sac and um, this access road 8A that connects County Highway UU and Whispering Springs Drive will be built north of it. There's a question here. Will there be detours of Highway 23 during the project? Um, no, there will. Highway 23 is not being detoured. Um, it is remaining open to traffic throughout construction um, with one lane each direction, bi-directional traffic. So because it's because it's continuing to be open, there is no detour. Why was the decision made to build a brand new road off UU into Whispering Springs and cutting the woods down across the street from my house instead of joining the existing roads that exist? Yeah, those uh, decisions were, were made uh, several years ago uh, with um, several public information meetings, public hearings. Um, uh, if, if you've got more questions with that, please uh, you know give, give me a call. This is Rob Wagner again with uh, contacts for available on this slide, but um, basically all of the decisions to build the new roads and connections, everything we did with that um, went through a very long intensive process in an environmental impact study that took many years and uh, 
and we have to follow that document from our, uh, our from a legal standpoint with all the coordination that we did with all the agencies and everything that goes into that. So the plans that we have explained here tonight are what's going to be built um, and I guess just the why simply it made the, the best sense to provide the best access for uh, for the folks in the area. All right. Um, how will the plank trail get down the hill? Um, basically, it, it parallels the roadway um, through that section. And as we discussed a little earlier, we are um, we are changing, you know, reducing the slope of that hill with yep. the project. And there, there will be a barrier wall built between the trail and the highway. So that wall will run approximately from County K where the bridges are, will be built all the way up uh, just past the hilltop area. And then as, as the trail follows the, the, the on-ramp away from the highway, then, then that, that barrier is not needed. But uh, that's basically how it'll get down there. It, it'll still be a steep hill, obviously. So, uh, you know, it may be difficult to bike up or down for, for folks. So it's certainly something um, that provides nice access, but um, I would say caution should still be used when using it uh, as a bike trail. Nate, there's a question here. Um, can you explain the Highway K north of 23 schedule and access again? Um, so the Highway K north of 23, um, the the section that segment of road is scheduled to be closed june 15th and will last um, until september 1st from the roundabout to the north um that segment will be closed just for those that duration um to allow for that to be constructed it will be opened and closed after school is done and open before school starts um, as far as the jug handle and the north roundabout that will be closed um, on the roughly the same time frame will close May mid to mid to late May and will remain closed through the duration of the project. Um, so until November 15th, 2022. Um, so it, it will be diff you won't be able to ac access 23 from the north of County, County K coming to the south. Um, but it'll be open for school. I don't know if that helps answer that question or not. Yeah, so basically you. It's closed to the on the north side this year to build from the roundabout up past the school to make that connection. Uh, we open that back up at the uh, end of August, early September, and then. Um, but the connection from 23 stays closed. So. Um, question here about what side of Highway 23 will a bike path be on? Um, I guess I can answer that one. From UU to the east, it will be on the south side of the road. Um, the bike path will then cross on the new um, bridge that we're building at County UU. And from UU to 151, the bike, pa bike trail will be on the north side of the road. Um, there's a question here about going back to the contact page so people can get the emails. Uh, Rob will get to that here. When leaving American Drive, will you be able to go left and right with the temporary road? Yes, um, that the the traffic staging there does allow um, traffic to go both directions. What is the speed limit planned for the new 8A access road going to be? Um, that that that's going to be a local road, um, I believe, for the the town of Empire. So that would be up to them. I don't think we have a posting at this point. So um, that is something they'd have to determine. Um, we'd have to get, uh, 
get back. That's a good question. <laughs> and um, we'll, we'll check with them and uh, whoever asked that question, if you want to uh, pass that question, if, if you want to find out specifically, um, send it to Kurt and he can get back to you. But yeah, that's something that we can make sure that the town has an answer to before long. But certainly when it's open, they'll have something. All right. Um, another question here. Stage one shows golf course drive highlighted. Why is that? Um, I guess I'm trying to look at my picture here. I'm not sure which one's golf course drive. Golf course drive to me is the local road that is north of the golf course that connects into uh, near Highway U. So I don't know if that person can rewrite that question to help us understand it or uh, maybe raise your hand as we go on into this presentation to ask that. And then the last question I have here, it says, will snowmobiles be allowed on the trail? Well, that a question has been asked uh, quite a bit, and that is entirely up to the county because once this road or the trail is complete, the project's complete, the county will, it will be a county facility and it is up to them. So I do believe it's allowable and they plan to allow use on it. Um, but again, it's a, it's a county facility and uh, it is their decision. Yeah, and we've we've worked with the snowmobile clubs um, providing a crossing across the UU bridge for their trail. Um, so we have been doing coordinating with the snowmobile clubs with this project as well. Is that it for the chat box? I believe that is all the questions. Um, do we want to have folks that want to ask, uh, raise your hands, and if there's anybody left that wants to do it that way? What's that? Oh, two more questions came in, I guess. How long will John Deere have access to 23? Um. John Deere will never lose access to 23 or to 23 will be a, I'm sorry, they'll lose access to 23 um, in stage two. So it'll be mid to late May, early June is at some point they'll lose that access point. And then um, I think this is the clarification from the golf course drive question. It says, what is the highlighted road? in stage one that runs parallel to 23 so i'd have to assume it's it's the one on the very north that's what we call road 8a that will be the the best access to the whispering springs drive on, on the east side of the golf course that'll be that direct road between uu and whispering springs drive Somebody raised their hand. All right, here. Steve Victor. Yeah, you you guys are doing a great job. Good for Thank you. Thank you. I live in Whispering Springs, and I'm I'm happy about the deal. I'm kind of one of the weirdos up here. Good job. Nice job, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. We we appreciate the compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at this point, I don't see any more questions. Um, again, I don't know if you want to go back to that contacts page one last time um, in case anybody's still trying to scribble down our, our emails or phone numbers. Um, again, you know, Nate and Jack are out there on the project every day. I'm down there several days a week. Um, if you have questions, please give us a call, contact us. Um, we can we can work through uh, work through any concerns or questions you may have. So. Um, 
I the, guess I'd like to just say uh, thanks for everybody's patience, not only for the, the meeting tonight. Uh, this is, you know, we've been doing it now for a year, but uh, hopefully we're able to answer some questions here. But if you have any more questions, feel free to send them in to, to, to Kurt or Jack, and we certainly like to do that. And I guess I'd like to ask for patience from everybody for the next two years. Um, you know, it's going to be a long process, but in, in the end, there's going to be a very nice facility out here. And, uh, you know, we just want to get through it as safely for everybody involved, being the traveling public and the construction workers out there. So um, spread the word, tell people to be cautious and uh, you know, drive safe. There was a question just slid in here at the end. Uh, will large semi trucks be able to access Mary Hill Park? Um, permanently or well, during construction, we're going to have to keep that. Um, and Mary Hill Park will have its own connection road that connects up to Highway K on the south side uh, roundabout. And uh, that facility is built so that uh, a semi can turn into there um, as well as emergency vehicles. Hang on, a couple more coming in. When will it go to four lanes from the Plymouth to Fond du Lac County line and Fond du Lac County line to Seven Hills Road? Uh, most of that work will be completed here this fall. Um, there'll be a couple different traffic switches here throughout the uh, the summer to get the, the different portions and the medians and things like that all, all finaled up, but those two projects are scheduled to be completed here um, this fall. And then another one just came in here. Will Richards Road have access east and west when complete? And yes, there, there will be um, access both directions. All right. So I guess with that, I guess anybody that may be on the phone i don't know if there's any questions out there or um if uh you want to just email any questions you may have yeah uh, you can go to the project website and get contact information or, or you can call or email myself my name was on the letter that you all received so With that, again, we'd like to thank everybody for the participation and uh, hope for a, a, a good year and a safe year of construction out there. Please be aware while you drive through and, and uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to ask questions if you have any throughout the process. So I would advise anybody or I would advise as, as many people as possible to get on Jack's email list for weekly updates of the project. Um, it's a great way to stay in contact with with what's going on out there. So. All right, thank you.